Hi, hello, and welcome to another episode of Of Course China. My name is Fernando, and this is Ziv. And today we are with Shirley Wang.、Uh, Ziv, why don't you tell us something about Shirley, please?、Uh, Shirley Wang. She was born a little over 15 years ago in Taiwan, but then、uh, moved to the mainland, China. Lived here most of her life. Um, and went to、uh, international schools、uh, right from first grade, and、uh, she started writing when she was eight, which is kind of impressive. And、um, then later on, she continued to do different uh, uh, freelance work as a teenager, like writing,、mm-hmm. taking photos, videos. And recently, she published a book, which is about business for teenagers. Thanks for being here, Shirley.、Oh, thank you. Here、thanks、at Starbucks. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having me. All right, cool.、Um, so let's、uh, show you guys、uh, the book. It's、yeah. called Business Insider with a Teenager, Shirley Wang.、Um, okay,、But、tell us a little bit about about the, what the book is about and、uh, what brought you to writing this book. Yeah, of course. So Business Insider with a Teenager is basically a business guide for teenagers specifically. So it kind of teaches you a lot of things about what you need to know as a teenager in the business industry. So you know, there's of course like how to work, how to get a job, how to do interviews, how to start your own business,、um, how to get along with people, how to make those connections, and mo- so- a lot of things about social media because this is a really big part of our kind of our generation is social media and how you can also make money off of social media. And one of the most important topics that I kind of tap into is how you kind of break the stereotype around. You know, being really young, but also kind of you know working as someone that's really young. So because you know you're really young, but you know a lot of people think that oh you're too young you can't work. You have to be 18 to work or at least 16. But this is like this book is kind of like a way to tell people that you don't have to be a certain age to start working and start you know kind of pursuing your dreams. I guess makes sense.、Um, can you tell us why why you decided to write the book and and what what was your motivation? So I think. Why I started writing this book is because there is in this industry there you know there are a lot of business books. Like I went to this library in Taiwan and they had like in the management and business section they had a lot of books, but they were targeted at adults. There were no books that were targeted at teenagers or young adults. So I think that was like kind of a missing chunk in the business industry where they don't really target the younger generation and kind of help them navigate towards you know where they want to be. So I think that was something miss- that was something that was missing, and I wanted to kind of fill that gap. Right, Fernando, you read books about business?、Uh, I've read books about business. I actually went to business school for the first six months of my university,、oh, yeah. and then I switched.、Uh, but I wanted to ask you a question. I mean, do you say that there was a void in this industry? Was there a void, or was it something that perhaps had been tried before and failed? I mean, tried before and there was no market for it. Perhaps there aren't too many books written for. Teenagers about business because well, not many of them have the opportunity to go into business or the the the, the desire to go yeah, into business. Yeah, I think the Ziv something said something like there's like a really small percentage of teenage entrepreneurs and people that you know like younger people that are entrepreneurs, and I think that's really true. And I think that's just like there's a smaller community, which is why it hasn't been really like. Kind of branched out, kind of made into a big thing because there aren't a lot of teenage entrepreneurs or you know teenagers interested in business. Because you know a lot of my friends personally, they when they think about business, they think about something that's really boring and that's very kind of like oh it's just about money, like it's just not very. It's boring、fun. for them at、it's、this age. It's boring for them basically, yeah. When when did it start being not boring for you? For me, like before, of course, I thought it was boring before, but then I think when the social media part came in. And I kind of learned more about this industry, about you know, I think it just kind of fit my personality because I'm a very ambitious person. So it kind of like fit my personality, and I really kind of pursued this path. Of course, there are people that like different things, and they're from different industries, and they like you know different topics. But personally, I was very into business. So, so I, I read a little bit the first few pages, and、uh, I should read more later, and <laughs> I will. And、uh, you, you actually write very openly, very honestly. I'm not some business guru. I'm not a proven business person, but I think this book should be written. So, how how did you know what to write about? How how did you come up with with those things? I think because for the past like two years, I've been studying a lot of business related things, but not just like you know like. 
business things that kind of apply to you or you, like you know, adults, like it applies to younger people. So it applies to like teenagers that want to actually get a job, you know? Like these things, like you don't really, like people your age might not really think about those things or go study it, but like I would and I was really interested in it. So I gathered a lot of knowledge and I kind of connected with a lot of people on Instagram that were teenage entrepreneurs. So that's why there's like literally a whole chapter where I have seven pretty big like teenage entrepreneurs. They're like people from like, they, like there was like this girl, like she's from Australia. She started selling like soaps that she handmade when she was 12 years old. And now she's made like a really big business out of it. So right. like there are people that I've just kind of connected with right. and I kind of learned their stories. And I thought that was really interesting. I learned a lot of things. From there are a lot of kids doing slime for money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the, one of the things that I find a little bit, um, confusing when we when we were talking about these things is when I think of business I think about making money mm. when I think about a job I think about earning money I've had jobs since I was six mm -hmm. right, my right. father would never give me any money it was like do that and I'll give you money right. do that and I'll give you money but I was just earning my money I was not really making right. money right. Um, what's what's the difference how do you differentiate these things in the book is there a difference for you or because for example when you think about social media is that making money or earning money Right, because like when we were kids, we did whatever. I delivered flowers. Uh, that's earning Sell money, lemonade. right? You know, sell lemonade. Maybe that's making money. But yeah. that's but but let's hear from you. You know, you understand the question, right? Like, what is the yeah, difference? Uh, yeah, because you talk about a job and not a business, that, uh, and it's quite different. I mean, to get a job. I mean, if you're a teenager and you want to get a job, you can go wash a car. That's a job. That's not a business. Right. You can go right. and clean something, and that that's a job. It's quite easy. You don't need so many interview skills to go get a, a entry level job. Right. But to develop a business, right. that's interesting. That's something that yeah. entrepreneurship uh, has something to do with that. Um, what's in there for for entrepreneurs? So I have, I think it's like there, I, of course I talk about like you can just get a job at Subway and just kind of like talk about like, it's just really easy. Of course, so that's, to yeah, you talk money. about it like that's one way to make money? Yeah, of course, there are easier ways to make money. Like there's so many ways, like you can just go online and do like a bunch of surveys and then you get like some money right, off of it. Right, of course, right. there are like easy ways to make money, but I think that depends on individuals and what they're looking for or what they're hoping for. Like for me, I look for experience and also for like, in specific industries, like I wanted to work a little bit in journalism because I was passionate about writing. So I came to Here Magazine and Don't Go On right. and I kind of applied for a job there. And of course, it's a lot like, it's a kind of like a higher stakes, I guess, compared yes. to when you're just, you know, try, trying to find a job in Subway, something like that. Right. So I think it's just like, depends on you and what industry you're going into. And if you're just looking for a little bit of experience or a little bit of money or just, you want to start building a base for yourself so you can eventually get somewhere such as become a you know a full-time entrepreneur so you do both you do jobs and you do entrepreneurship right i mean like can you tell us what are you involved with at the moment like yeah. what kind of what are you, how are you earning your money from so where? i i have a lot of income okay. streams yeah, i believe in, interesting i believe in multiple income streams and i first of all like this book of course i'm earning money from that and um, I also earn, I used to earn money from this coaching service that I did online. I opened my own website and I had a lot of people ask me for coaching advice. Like teenagers? Did, yeah, teenagers, of course. Like people, like young adults, like college students, high school students. And I've actually helped a lot of students kind of, kind of build their own business. I helped this girl, um, I think she's in the Philippines and she asked me for a one-on-one -on -one call in like in April. And now she has her own business on Instagram where she just helps people do portrait photography. So she helps people, you know, she kind of book sessions and she's actually kind of successful in her area at the moment. And I think like, I really helped her. Like I really kind of, kind of like settled down, like, you know, like booking sessions and kind of taught her like the pricing situation, stuff like that. And yeah, that's what I did for like a little bit. And of course I charged a little bit for that. And uh, another part I'm doing is freelance videography and freelance kind of filmmaking and that's like a really big part of my income stream so I've gotten a lot of job offers from like cafes restaurants um, local factories and manufacturing companies and they've asked me to come do their marketing videos for them or kind of like kind of break down like if they're making like a product like you're making a wine bottle or like a wine kind of box for example and they want me to kind of take videos from like 
the beginning to the end, kind of like those videos, and they want to like give it out to their public or to their customers, stuff like that. And they want me to shoot those videos, and of course, I get money from that. That's like one part of my income stream. And uh, I think like a year ago, I started a photography business that I still get, I book a lot of sessions with, so that's like another part of my income stream. Yeah, and then I, I work at here. Yeah. So, so, yeah. You, so I pay you. At, I pay you for articles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I work yeah. at Here Magazine as yeah, well, and yeah. I. Got what do that. you do yeah. with your money? What, what do, do you like to do with your money? Uh, I save it mostly. I'm very specific with how I allocate my money. So I have like this. I just kind of I have book it on my phone, and I know like where I'm spending my money. Like if I go out to eat, because my mom doesn't give me any money. She probably gives me. I think it depends on people, but like she gives me two hundred. Per month to just like go out and eat. Two hundred RMB. Yeah, like, RMB. Like Thirty dollars. Yeah, something like that. To yeah. so go out and eat, maybe buy a few drinks if I'm just kind of out and about, stuff like that. And yeah, the rest is if I want to buy clothes or something or like something extra, and I'll use my own money. But you, okay, yeah. so you you have money, you make money, so hmm. you say you're very organized with it. Yeah, very organized. Um, that's that's I think that's one of the qualities that entrepreneurs uh, should have yeah. <laughs> um, to be successful, right? Do you mm-hmm. you write about that in the book about being organized? Yeah, of course, being organized is of course there are a lot of habits that go into being an entrepreneur. But I think in this book, I focus on confidence as one of the biggest ways to you know, right. you know get a job. And are you are you saving the money for something specific, like, or it's just like you have a, you know, people save whatever thirty uh, percent and thirty percent for you know, you don't have rent to pay. I but think <laughs> I think I want to save a lot of that money for kind of self development because like. If I have like a big, a bigger project, because I have a lot of co- project opportunities coming at me. So if I have like a project opportunity and I need to learn something about it, but I don't have the resources or the mentors, and I need to like pay someone, like this is the kind of money I'm saving up for, like some kind of self development. So I have like a chunk of money and just like you know right. waiting to allocate to something important. I but. I remember there was always um, back in the day when I was a kid a bit of opposition towards teenagers working because. What a lot of adults said at the time was that once you get a taste of that sweet little money, money yes. mm. you don't want to go to university. You just want to keep on working and keep on making money. And mm-hmm. how how do you balance that? Do you think you're going to go to university? Um, do you do you encounter these when you talk to teenagers saying like I just want to make money? I don't want to go to university. This is all I want to do. I don't want to do uh, YouTube videos and that's all I want to do, or Instagram modeling and that's all I want to do. That is a very very big debate and question especially for people like my age it's just like whether you want to go to college or not because there are a lot of people that say college is not worth it and it's really it's a lot of money and you just go there and you you know you, you go there for like kind of the college culture and not exactly just to learn something that's going to be useful for you when you try to get a job in the future so my personal answer to that is that if you don't if you go, if you kind of go if you go to college you have and you want to drop out then you have to think about a few things first you have to think about um like do i have the base do i have like do i see see myself going somewhere after this do i have like an entrepreneurial path do i have like a business that is like steady you know like you can't like drop out for something like like one youtube video that goes viral and the other like just one youtube video that goes viral and the others don't go like you know aren't doing as well some of that like you you can't do it for like simple small things it has to be something that is it's, promising it's like so, a promising path it's so mature yeah. of you to say that i mean honestly <laughs> um is this something you you be, i think you probably learn a lot right so yeah, you consume course. so those books that you saw at the, the bookstore mm. um for adults mm. Uh, you say should they have uh, they should have books for teenagers, but actually you read those books for adults, I guess. Um, not some a of them. lot. I've I've read some of the <laughs> best ones. I choose right, like the best ones right. are the most popular ones, of course. So someone like you consuming a lot, learning, you know, self help, self business learning, mm-hmm. and, and and all of those things. Um, what what medias do you use? What mediums do you use to consume to learn? I use YouTube. You use like YouTube a lot. Right. Yeah. They have a lot of good resources up there, so of course YouTube is like a big resource, and then Instagram to connect with entrepreneurs that are, you know, that might be helpful. You know, I think that's a pretty good. But I mean, with place. YouTube, which is, I agree 100. I'm sure you do. Mm-hmm. That you got everything on YouTube. Hey, you yeah. want anything you want to learn, you can find it. Yeah. So you, you still read books? Yeah, of course, I still read. You books. do still yeah, read yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I used to read more books than I do now. Because I'm very, I'm a, I think I'm sort of kind of an impatient person, so I'd like to get straight to the point. And like books, sometimes I think some books kind of like they have one central idea in that one book that they want you to get, and that they have like one theme. But I want to learn multiple things, you know. So like 
it's like I want to get straight to the point rather than like what you can do in a YouTube video. You just get straight to the point. Whether you just kind of read for a while and then you kind of listen to a guy's like whole life story and then you get one like small like detail. Like maybe the the whole like model of the story is work hard, something like that. You know. So like I'd rather have more like value in a certain like in a certain time. I guess. Yeah, and you need patience. I yeah, mean, yeah which people don't have today. Yeah, of course. Like I, I think I follow the stereotypical like short attention span of my generation. Is just you do follow that? Yeah, I but you still read that. books. I read less. Less. Now. Yeah, okay. definitely less. So I mean, okay. So uh, writing a book, I wanted to say. Uh, mm -hmm. So I always, I also write since I was young, not eight, <laughs> maybe fifteen. Okay. Okay. But uh, you know, and it's a thing. People that like to write, it's a thing. They say one day I'll write a book. Right. Yeah. Of course. Uh, especially, you know, being in China for so long, like one day I'll write a book mm -hmm. about China. But yeah. you know, we say it, and you're not even 16, and you you did it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so how how long did it take you? Like, uh, you know, uh, it's it's difficult to write a book. Mm hmm. So I did a lot of research on this. So I think there's a lot of things you have to come, like you have to think about first. Like one of the things is how long do you want your book to be about to be? You know, like what is your content going to be about? And for example, my niche was the business, like entrepreneurship books. So, how long is, are those books usually? You know, how many words are those? You know, and yeah, it took me three weeks, which I think is kind of fast. But I self-published it, so of course the process is going to be faster. But I wrote it in three weeks, wow. and I had a really strict schedule. So this is a lot of people think like, whoa, three weeks, like this is a very fast. But I had a really strict schedule that I set for myself. So I wrote one thousand to two thousand words a day. Ah, uh, that was like day. you had to that I had to, yeah. And I was very, very consistent. So for three weeks straight, there was not one day that I did not write 1,000 words. And that was in like Taiwan back then. And that's when like the coronavirus was like, you know, starting to kind of break out. So there was like, even like, there was like a day where I had to take a flight back to China. And that day I still wrote 1,000 words. I wrote like 1,000 words on my phone and then I copy pasted it onto my computer later on. So it's just kind of like dedication. It's just like a mindset sort of thing, I guess, yeah. How did you how did you start to organize your book? I mean, you you knew you wanted to write about business and yeah. for teenagers. How many chapters are there? How many uh, subsections? Sorry, <laughs> how many chapters yeah. are there? So there are eight chapters of as of now. I was planning on doing like ten or twelve chapters, but I think I think your plan changes over time for writing. So I had this really clear outline of what I was going to do, and every single chapter was like every single chapter kind of touches on different topics. So I had like these main like big kind of topics that I wanted to cover. So of course I wrote those down and kind of break those down and have those important points that I wanted to cover as well. And I kind of just like did an outline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And um, did you do any proofreading? Uh, did you have anybody read your work before you actually went to print or? Yeah, I had an editor. I had two people. Like one was my editor and another one was a like a business friend. Like he's going into the business industry. So I had a friend kind of read over, give me some pretty like main idea, like big suggestions of like, like there was like this chapter that he thought like my morals were going a little bit wrong. Like he was like, oh, this is not a very good tip. You know, like this is just not a very good way. I don't, I don't think you're structuring this right. You know, so he gave me a lot of good tips and yeah. And then he's also really a teenager. Helpful. He's like 18. He's 18. Yeah. yeah. So I want it from like a younger perspective because I didn't want. And then I also had um, I sent a few chapters to the eight people that kind of contributed to the book in my chapter three. So I interviewed with them and I had put their interviews in the book and they kind of wanted to get to know what this, book, what this book was about. So I sent them a few chapters and of course some of them gave me some tips and ideas of you know what they wanted to add or what information they wanted to put in. So you have a part of the book where you talk to those uh, yeah. those influencer, teenage influencers? Um, they're not just influencers. There are um, entrepreneurs and uh, yeah, influencers and YouTubers, Instagrammers, like just people that kind of make money through their industry, bloggers as well. Like there's so many of them. And yeah, I just kind of like asked their story and kind of interviewed them. I emailed all of them. They're all, I think they all live in like, one lives in Australia, most of them live in the US. And yeah, just kind of interview them, contact them. So there is kind of a community that, no, I guess not always connected. Not everybody know each other, but there's kind of a community of those people around the world. That yeah, of course, to. of course, yeah. Right. And uh, so what, what's the most important advice you think? What's the most important advice you give in this book or, or three? Very, oh, that's very hard. Um, <laughs> I think... Like I if think you take one thing from the book, what? 
I think, I mean, I've read a few of the reviews that, like, I personally can't because I wrote this book, but, like, I read a few of the reviews, and one of the most important things is just be confident and don't overthink it, because I feel like a lot of people, is a big thing for teenagers, like, a lot of teenagers are very, like, they fret a lot, especially during interviews or something like that, and they kind of get in over their heads. So I think one of the biggest things that people learned from this book was be a little bit more confident and kind of settle into, like, who you are and be more confident about what you want, you know? So I think that was, like, a big idea that people kind of pulled away from this book. And, of course, there's a lot of information, and it's like a, it's like a guide, basically. And they learned a lot of, like, information from this book. So, yeah, there's a lot of things people learned. I so guess. the principle of done is better than perfect goes along this way. Like, I think, get something yeah. done, don't just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, like, overthink it, I think. Yeah. So, like, before I used to, like... Over, like, I used to write a lot of, like, novels, I think, like, drafts of novels, and I would probably, like, write the first chapter, and then I would read over it, and I would stop, because I didn't, like, like it, I didn't think it was, like, perfect enough, and I think I was do I could do better, so I just stopped with that idea, and I didn't even touch it anymore, so I think that was, like, pretty, you know, I think that's a great it. advice, I, 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 uh, I, I'm pretty bad with that many times, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not, so then you're not fast enough, you just yeah. don't, can decide is it good enough is not mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, yeah being a perfectionist can be a bit of a challenge yeah. um, I think that one of the biggest issues with entrepreneurs is finding the path to scaling things up mm -hmm. because making money is easy yeah. just get something cheap just sell it for, for a profit that's it you made your money mm -hmm. repeat and scale up that's the challenge is there anything there about scaling a business up into it becomes a multi-million operation is there any experience with somebody making millions of dollars in this book? Yeah, or oh, yeah. So there's this guy that this guy that I really like, and I've like been following his story for like a few years. And then I reached out to him. His name is uh, Brendan Agronoff. You can find him on CNN Business. Like on, you can just go online and find Br Brendan Agronoff. You can find him, and he has a. I think his company makes like two or three million dollars per year, and he actually makes uh, custom sock designs and he has like two or three warehouses in his home country and yeah he's like pretty big and he gives some pretty good How advice is he? he is currently 18 but he started when he was like 15 16. yeah he started making like millions when he was 15 16. so you interviewed him and he gave advice yeah he gave some pretty good advice like a, a lot of them gave pretty good advice but he gave some i think his i think his main advice was i think about who he connected with so like the people that he kind of interacted with more often. So as like high schoolers, you often get caught up in your own like social group and you don't really break out of those groups. And I think that's a really big issue with a lot of people, individuals in high school. So his main kind of idea was just like break out of those groups and learn more from what you're kind of used to, like break out of the mold. Basically. So like Fernando, you had a very, very good uh, uh, question you had there because like this is deeper business, right? This mm -hmm. is deeper business like when you talk think about scaling and mm -hmm. like is it do you for your own business businesses right yeah. jobs all of that do you think very deeply very technically about like business because like scaling right like this mm -hmm. scales because you can you know but like sprint but more and when you write for here magazine it doesn't scale because it's just you, you need to write it you have only amount of hours a day right yeah, yeah, yeah. right so um, do you think about those kind of like how much you think about business in the most technical way, yeah. So I think about if I do like one thing, it's not just one thing. There's obviously like multi-purpose for like this one thing. Like for example, I wanted to use this book as kind of like a business card. So this is like one of the ways that people kind of kind of promote themselves as a first-time author. So you can kind of promote your business and also kind of attach like maybe your website or your services, like for coaching services, you can attach that as well. So yeah, scaling it up for like business wise, I think it depends on an individual. It depends on like who it is and what kind of industry they want to go into. Of course, this book has a lot of good tips for first time. So this is more like kind of first time, like how you start a business, how you set it up. But, and then it gives you pretty good advice on like kind of the habits of entrepreneurs and kind of getting to know more people in the industry so that you can get in touch with you know those people with like these pretty good habits with pretty good ideas so you can kind of get started one yeah. of the things that um, I find more challenging when it comes to business is mm -hmm. the legal side of business Ooh, let me yeah. explain your friend who makes uh, tailor-made socks yeah. right 
that's that's nothing new. Anybody can do that. Mm-hmm. So how do you? Does he talk? Do you talk about how to protect yourself from an idea? Because when you have an yes. idea, that's all you have. You have an idea, right? Mm-hmm. So you go and you sit with somebody. How do you make sure that they don't steal your idea? That they don't leave you by the roadside, like just oh, I wanted to, and then they took off with your idea. How do you protect yourself? Is there anything in there for people to to learn how to? negotiate and yes yes for the legal let's talk about the legal side first so legal side i have that in my first chapter you can definitely read about it it's just like it's basically i think the legal side is just like who you work with is very important and who do you talk to your ideas about so like in business there's like this big issue with trust and of course as teenagers you would often be like oh like this guy's giving me an opportunity i want to trust him yeah you know so like i think it's very so i really kind of push this kind of topic on people like it's just you have to decide who you can trust and it's often it's kind of hard to like kind of you know see like the outcomes of who you can trust but like trust people that you can depend on and also that someone's that working with you that wants the best out of what you're kind of looking for I think that's the best way to go about it but yeah so that's like the legal side but legal side there's of course there's a bunch of things that you have to go through Like there is, if you want to make it a, a legit business, there is of course paperwork, but then you need adults for that because you need to be at a certain age to kind of get all that paperwork done. And of course, I think it's best if you kind of utilize your parents to begin with, to kind of help you set up all of that legal stuff first and kind of get you kind of associated it and understanding, like more understanding about kind of what to do and you know how to make this bigger, how to scale this up, make it more like right. a, bigger thing all right yeah um before we take a break and continue wh- where 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 so where can i buy this book other than amazon you say kindle right uh, yeah amazon so, and kindle yeah right and then you're not selling it in the big store yet you said right yeah of course not yet right so that's where to, you sell it in china you have a chinese version yeah i have a chinese version but it's i only have 250 books of that for now right. so it's not oh, you don't have there. a Chinese uh, yeah. Kindle or whatever they no it's here. not official yet I'm trying to upload it for the next few weeks but yes of course there's going to be a Chinese version up very soon before right. we go into the cut can you explain to me this cover yeah <laughs> it's actually this printing is extremely orange like this is not the best version they're still printing more yeah. version of that All right yeah what is in the background there what, what is it And you wear like I, it's the main okay. trying glasses. Or yeah, something? yeah. So like the main like kind of with like a tag on it. So yeah. it's more like it's just kind of something that's a bit kind of quirky, but it's also eye catching. So this is the main. I think one of the like if you go on Amazon and you kind of look through all the books, they're kind of like you know their the designs are very Dull. simple yeah. and very kind of there's just like one graphic on it or just like someone holding a sign or something like that. So I just wanted to make it more like eye catching and I think it really worked because the Amazon sales have been pretty high recently. So yeah, I think it's just something that I wanted to be eye catching, something that was different. All right, let's take a break. Sure, that's Business Insider with a teenager. We're gonna take a short break and we're going to be back in a second. Don't go anywhere. And we're back with Shirley Wang. Today we sit here at Starbucks in Dongchang, Dongguan. I wanted to say thank you to, to, for letting us uh, use their nice space here. And uh, also mentioned that this was the first Starbucks in Dongguan. I know, yeah. I know. 15 <laughs> years ago they opened. Before that it was hard to get coffee, decent coffee at least in Dongguan. And I was here the first day taking photos downstairs. I remember they gave free coffee. There was a line all the way there to the street. There was a big line. This was the first one and today there must be... About like 50? 50 branches. 50 Dongguan. branches only in Dongguan. Yes. And I always wonder at the beginning is like, how is the culture going to accept coffee? It's a tea culture. Right. But, yep, there you go. It was only foreigners in the beginning. Uh-huh. And now it's only Chinese, I think. You can do you drink up. coffee? Yeah, of course. You do? Definitely, yeah. Cappuccino's. I started drinking coffee when I was five. Right. <laughs> I'm Colombian. <laughs> actually, actually, it's a good question because the, like, uh, coffee is like an adult thing, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, And so is business. Yeah, so it's exactly, so you, you do business and you wrote a book and you drink coffee. And what other adults thing you do? I mean, if you ask me personally, like this is already part of my lifestyle, so you can't really tell, like ask, like what adult right. things do you right. do? Yeah. Right. But I think the biggest thing is that I make money. A lot of people my age don't I go ahead and you right. know, have a job or make money or something. I think that's right. the biggest thing. 
Right. That's that's what we wanted to to talk about um, uh, this part of the video. We wanted to go back a little bit and talk about your childhood, talk about mm -hmm. your your parents, talk about your family, your education, and what brought you to this point in your life, 16 years after having been born. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about well your family first, and then we could talk about your school and other other influences. Right. Yeah. So my family, I'm Taiwanese. So my family has been here. We have a family business. We're in the packaging industry and we've been here for I think more than 10, 20 years. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I've been here all of my life and I've lived in Dongguan all of my life. So I have I think coming from like a business family really has helped me kind of get into the mindset of business and they've always kind of pushed me to motivate myself. And I think there's a lot of like you know, important qualities that a business family teaches you. Mm -hmm. And I think working hard is I think one of the main like core ideas that you kind of are brought up with. So is it is it like I mean I, I told you when we met a few months ago right uh, I was a bit I was fascinated with that because as a parent mm -hmm. to a, almost a teenager um, you know I look at my uh, my daughter and I mean she plays a lot of games on on her, on her iPad and I think like many other kids right and you're different so like you say influence from your parents they do business but is it like was it hands on or was it like nuances like you you saw them working hard or they actually Got, you sat know, you down and yeah and and wanted you to learn actively like not learn but you know what i mean like s observe or was it passively i think it's a little bit of both so i think uh, my my father would be more kind of like he would have he had a pretty good reputation and he did a lot of business so he did most of the business part so i would look up to him of, of course and then my mother would be more she would sit us down or me down and then kind of like talk to me about kind of business aspects and pretty big like business ideas so that I would be kind of inspired so she kind of threw that in there and kind of like helped me get inspired and then after that I would just kind of go on by myself and learn more about this right. industry yeah. could right. you give us an example of one of these things that she threw at you that probably worked and made you uh, and inspired you so I think that she I think I think there's so many things because I think she inspired like me to write this book and a lot of the little things that a little like little kind of ideas and kind of like kind of like little life lessons that she throws in there and of course I learn it and kind of implement it by myself and I think it's like a growing process so there's not like one thing that mm -hmm. I can really put point. At what age you started reading? Reading very very young like probably actually I started reading in fifth grade like started like really like liking to read and starting to like actually to really like, like reading to like, like reading and started right. you know spontaneously did, did going your parents after push it. us push push you to to read more they bought me i remember like really like they bought, they bought me like probably like 40 50 books kind of like just brought into my room but they were all like chinese books and i didn't like any of them but eventually i think i got into like i got into like little novels like you know fiction store stories like that and i just really liked it so yeah right right so I'm, I'm looking for, you know, I'm trying to look mm. for the the nature versus nurture. The yeah. what, what, which one is it? You know, you are a real life example of someone that's quite impressive. Fifteen and a half years old, um, you are making money, you're doing business, you wrote a book. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent, I'm, I'm looking like, how do I make my child like that? <laughs> my mom, a actually, a lot of people, a lot of my mom's friends have like asked her, and her answer is just like let them do their thing that's right. her biggest answer because she doesn't really get involved with a lot of things that I'm doing like she's not very one of those like really active parents like PTA like all that stuff like she's she doesn't do that she's more like laid back she doesn't help me with my homework right. she's like figure it out yourself that's her biggest model like figure it out yourself and kind of go do it yourself so basically you're saying there is a lot of uh, nature and independence here. yeah independence yeah right I, I had a personally like a different approach like my dad was a very stingy dad. What does that like, mean? Like, like, he wouldn't give us any money at all. Yeah, like, my parents, I want, yeah. I, want th I want this. What are you going to do? What are you going to do for the money? He's trying to so, educate you in that yeah, exactly, way. Yeah. Exactly. So um, I think that that was one of the most valuable lessons that he taught me. Like, you got to work for your money. It's not going to come for you. It doesn't... I remember one of the things that he said, perhaps you guys have heard it, like, money doesn't grow on trees. Oh. Mm. So, <laughs> oh. How many so, times? Yeah, and like, since I was, I don't know, five years old, I would clean my dad's shoes and he would say, here's your money for tomorrow's uh, lunch at school. I'm like, okay, thank you, dad. And then I went to washing cars and taking care of dogs and walking dogs and painting houses. And I, I went up, uh, not in business, but understanding the value of money. Um, mm -hmm. 
when did you start making money? At what age? So I think I started making money these past few years. So not very recently, but I think. I think I started. I think my first job was that my mom. My mom would never, of course, like your dad. My mom would never just like give me up money straight up. Not even if I did chores at home, or maybe cleaned the bathroom, maybe like helped. I don't know a neighbor. I don't do just like those like things. Like she wouldn't help me. She wouldn't give me money for like those basic things because her philosophy was like this is a family and you're helping out this family. Like we're part of a family. We need to help each other. So that's her. That is her main philosophy. So she said, I'm not giving you money for something that you know you're already supposed to do.、Mm-hmm. So I think that the main. So I think I started earning money when、um, she would give me like jobs that I was supposed to kind of prepare for, like for tutoring. She treated me as like a real tutor that she would hire from outside. She made. She was like, okay, so if you want to tutor, like for example, your brother, then you have to make lesson plans. You have to make like full-on lesson plans. You have to do the implementation, the execution, and then do like maybe do like analysis reports of like his performance. Maybe like create tests, like all that stuff. Like she was very kind of like she made me do it, it from the beginning. Like to the, the real thing. Like the real thing. She treated me. I think the biggest thing is like my mom never treated me as a kid. She never talked to me as a kid. She talked to me as a friend or a colleague. And、mm-hmm. I think that's very mature of her. I think that's what made me kind of kind of mature at a really young age. I started like I was very mature at the age of like ten, so I was kind of you know a、it's、little very, bit ahead. It's very interesting you said that. You know, the other day I told my daughter that、uh, money doesn't grow on the trees,、mm-hmm. and then you know she said, yeah, but it, money is made from trees. I was like, <laughs> oh, you, you know what? I never、she、thought about it. She got you there. It. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> so you think your parents would?、Uh, what if you were just、uh, a regular, ordinary? Unfortunately, the ordinary. Teenager now sitting、mm. on the sofa for eight straight hours playing some Minecraft or whatever.、Yeah. Would your mom be okay with that?、Uh, n- no, first of all, because I-, I think I think she's okay with like I Netflix. So like I don't watch, I don't game or anything, but I Netflix a lot. So I think she she's okay with like me allocating my time, but she also wants me to do something that's important as well. So as long as I do, I finish my work, she will be like, "Oh, are you done with the, your, you know, work at here? Have you finished all your articles? Have you, you know, done the things that you need to do for your book?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes, yes." Then she's like, "Okay, I don't really care if you do whatever else you want to do. You want to go out with friends? Sure.、So、you want to Netflix? Sure." She supervises in her own way,、yeah. in her own way,、yeah. right? So like, mom, I'm watching Discovery, and then he puts Stranger Stranger Things or something like that. Yeah,、so、I don't think she minds. Like, it just as long as I finish my main work. Then, yeah, what、sure. what kind of things? Uh, 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 Business teenager like you、uh, watch on Netflix. Like, what do you what do you watch? I think normal things. Like, normal things. Yeah, like what? What have you watched like, recently that is good? There's not specific things that. What do you remember recently that you like? I'm actually watching Jane the Virgin right now because I'm trying to learn Spanish. I've heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Because and then her grandma always speaks a lot of Spanish. Okay. So I found that、okay. really interesting and I'm trying to learn a few you know phrases. I wanted、yeah. to I wanted to move up a little bit in your growing up experience and ask about your school. How did your school influence you? How did your school help you find your path to become this young business entrepreneur? So I transferred school to from my middle school. So think, which school、elementary. did you start with? Like which? Yeah, I started with Eaton House, of course, international school, and that I don't really remember a lot from that because I was really young back then. But then I started remembering things when I was in third grade. That was like the first year I was at TLC, which is like the school I was at for like six years. And that was where I started reading a lot of books, and where I started kind of getting into writing. And I had a lot of good language arts English teachers that kind of taught me, you know, how to write in like a novel style. And I think that was what really influenced me to do a lot of writing. And then、uh, I think last year, for my freshman year of high school, I came to AISG, which is an American International School of Guangzhou. And it was just like a different atmosphere, and people there were. I think it was just the people. I think they were very. First of all, they were really nice, and second of all, they were very ambitious. I think in in their own industry, and they were really hardworking people, and they kind of motivated me to be the same way. But a lot of. But then, yeah. So I think it's just the people in the school, the atmosphere. So, you, so you're a sophomore in high school now, studying in the、yeah. American. Uh, the American School of Guangzhou, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you studied. You started with TLC, which is、uh, an American style. Yeah, American style. International school. Yep. And you moved to Eaton House, which is、uh, more a bit more British. Yeah, it's a little bit more British. Yeah. And then now you're an American one. And yeah, so like, I guess it's it's a similar question. Like, how much does this affect 
the 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 child, the teenager, like what kind of school he goes to. First, mm -hmm. uh, just you know, within international schools, even, or is it just different uh, kids have different schools that that are suitable for them? I mean. Do you think it's just... Yeah, so I think I'm very fortunate to be in international schools. In international schools, you get to be with a lot of diverse people from different backgrounds, different industries, with parents that work in different industries. And of course, they have different personalities. And I think with that mixture, like with that diversity, you can learn a lot of different things. And I think, you know, like as a business person, like I've always been told, like, you want to do... Like you want to be, you want to learn a variety, of, variety of things, but then you also want to learn something in depth. Like you have to have one industry. Like if you're good at writing, you have to do, you have to do it really well. But then you also have to earn, le learn like a lot of different things. Like for me, it's videoing, designing, um, photography. Like there's a lot, of, a lot of different things. So like learning that from different people and being in an atmosphere where there are a lot of diverse, you know, students and friends, then I think that's a really good atmosphere to be in. So, yeah. so, you're, so you, you learn some, some of those things in school, actually, like photography? Did you have a chance to learn from someone at school? I uh, learned that mostly myself. I did a lot of self-learning, I think, but then I think school-based, it's learning about connections, which I talk about, like literally I have a whole chapter talking about connections, and it's about how you build connections with people in the long term and how you kind of utilize that and kind of, kind of like, you know, you hone that and then you make that into like kind of long-term connections. And I think it's just like, it's all about people. It's like, if you're in, bi in the business industry, you have to be good with people. It's all about people. So I think it's good to kind of like build that habit to be around like a diverse group of people from an early stage that's international, uh, you know, to do, and then it's good. It's a good, you know, it's a good starting place. Yeah, the connections that you make uh, both at school, university, and through life are, are very important for the development of business. Um, we were talking about um, how different parts of your life have taught you and brought you to where you are. I personally think that failure is one of the things that teaches you mm -hmm. the most, some of the most important lessons because they show you the weaknesses in your in your systems, in your structures, in your in your model, right? Yeah. And from there you can re-edify and be stronger. What about failure? <coughs> have you failed? Is there anything about failure uh, what is your experience failing if you have at any point? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid of failure, and I think as a person that is very, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm both like efficient, but I also want to do things well. Mm -hmm. So like failure, of course, like it's it, it's kind of it's bumming out for people like if you just fail at something that you know you think that you're you're really good at. But I think it's a good learning experience, and I can't really think of something that top of my head that I failed at. But of course. Like every person has failed and every person learned from those experiences and have actually just kind of gone better, done better, and hopefully, you know, kind of learn from their mistakes. I think that's the biggest thing in business is that you learn from your mistakes and then you do better. Do you have your, sorry, have your parents failed at anything? Has that taught you anything? I don't think, I mean, not specifically that I can remember, but they have taught me a lot of things about, you know, not being afraid of failure and not being afraid to kind of you know, do better and also to kind of like evaluate your mistakes. That, that one of the things that my, mo my mother taught me is that you have to, like, you have to accept that you've made mistakes and then you have to go back and kind of evaluate what you did wrong there and, you know, do better in the future. That's the, mo that's the main thing. Uh, we, we had a few failures last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I mean, that's very, it's very deep to understand that I think people our age, that have done business for a long time, uh, uh, it's something you understand. It's, I wish I knew it deeply, like now, when I was her age. Mm -hmm. I wish, mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, it prepares you better for life. I mean, it actually, I agree, it's very, it's like, it's like almost like I'm happy to fail sometimes. Like, yeah. it's the best lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the one that make you stronger uh, in the end, basically. Mm -hmm. The ones that hurt the most are like, okay, I'm not doing this again. I'm not making yeah. this mistake ever again. So yeah. you you correct course and then you continue on. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So moving on to to school. external um, influences. We talked about your parents. We talked about your school. Mm -hmm. Have there been other external influences that are remarkable? That that you say like, yes, this person has influenced who I am and my thinking, my my behavior, my. Uh, 
I don't know the oh, way yeah. I view life. Not even just a person, uh, either a person or an experience, a specific. Well, a business model, anything, anything yeah. else that has influenced you. I think recently that I can think of, there is one of my really good friends. His name is Philip, and he has really taught me, like he's really taught me, like of being a healthy lifestyle because that's what like my family pursues is like a healthy lifestyle and that includes like exercising eating healthy and also enjoying life and making money so you can you know do the things that you love to do and those things are just very important and i think he has taught me like because before i was a, a very very i think you can say unhealthy person i wasn't very kind of on track with my life and i wasn't really organized i didn't wasn't really responsible with the things i was doing so i think as I think, like, if you go online and you search, like, habits of a millionaire or something like that, and they'll teach you, like, all these habits of, like, exercising, like, you know, those things. And then, yeah, so implementing those things, I think, from a young age, from, like, starting now, I think is really important. And it has really, like, strained my priorities and has gotten me to focus more, to focus on my own lifestyle, which has really benefited, you know, my pursuit towards business things. So this person influenced you. That was before you wrote the book, I guess. Yeah, that was kind of during, kind of during. During. Yeah, yeah, during. So he's been like a friend for me. He's only been a friend for me like, probably less than a year. Okay. But he's a very influential person. Like really, yeah, has a really like, he has his lifestyle is something that I admire. What other things in your life that could have brought you to this, you know, to be who you are now? Like for example, you told me before uh, you traveled a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, some people watching this don't get to travel. For mm, example, right? Yeah. We are experts here. You grew up as a, you know, in, in not in your home, homeland exactly, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you had the opportunity to do that, right? So I guess this is one thing that helps. Yeah. So I think traveling opens. People say that traveling opens your kind of mind, your eyes to the world, and I think that's really important. Changes it kinda, you. It changes you. Yeah, definitely. So. I think that for me, at an early age, I started traveling and my parents were really like, they loved to travel, so they would travel probably like a lot, many times a year. So Where have I you been? Too many places. Too <laughs> like, many places. Like, places. Yeah. Um, What's your, your favorite? Italy, one? England, Australia, China, like uh, US, like I've been to many, many places. And I think being at those places is really has really opened my eyes to different cultures, different places, and kind of like the beauty of every single city and every single kind of place that I'm in and I think it's also inspired my writing to be a little more a little bit more unique I think to kind of like open my eyes to different types of writing and kind of exploring you know I think it's been really good inspiration honestly any other experiences that you remember that made you who you are like I don't know maybe you volunteered maybe maybe things that you know like Fernando said the thing that impacted you in, in I think when I started my photography business that was like when I first kind of broke into this like business idea how old were you i was i was i think i was like 13 i think yeah and then i think that's like the most recent memory i can think of but i was at an mun trip like you know people go to mun like when you're at my age and then we went to vietnam i was with a bunch of friends at the pool and i started taking photos of a friend on my phone and and then very and then they turned out to be very incredibly beautiful and very like very like really good like very professional and then eventually i was in the hotel room with five other people and we were trying to crack down a pricing list for packages and bundles for a kind of like a portrait photography business and literally like literally in within 3 days i had a portrait photography business and in in one month in less than one month i made 2000 3000 rmb from that business and and what what was the motivation in that moment like is it is it is it uh Oh, this is fun. Actually, you're enjoying the process, right? Yeah. Or is it like, I want to make money? Or is it like, I want my parents to be proud? What, what's the motivation there? I think it's not really much of a motivation. It was more like, I was very happy that I was turning something from like a passion into profit. So there's like a main... Satisfaction. Yeah, so it was a satisfaction. It was like, I'm turning something that I really love, which is photography, into something that I can make profit out of, which is, you know, just making money and then kind of working with people. And that was what I really loved. So like having, you know, from doing this to this, like passion to profit, like that process and kind of succeeding in doing that, that was really satisfying, I guess. Uh, um, this might be a little difficult question. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Like, uh, so like when, if you look at the, if you talk to our parents now, mm. you talk to other parents, what advice would you give to the other parents that have a 12 year old, 11 year old, um, and they kind of, they would be happy if they turn out kind of like you, like, responsible, organized, 
trying to, to think of the future, you know? I think be very, first of all, be very observant of what, I think every child is different. Like me personally, I just like to write, that's it. So I think be very observant of what your child like kind of is passionate about and then kind of push them towards into making that into passion to profit that kind of idea because eventually every single parent wants their kids to succeed right and then they don't want their kids to be like i don't know some struggling artist on the street kind of selling their art something like that you know so you want their kids to be also first happy and then second of all successful or you know at least making a certain amount of money in the future where you can support yourself right so i think first of all you want to kind of push them towards working hard and kind of pursuing their passion but then also acknowledging the fact that is this passion going to make you profit in the future? I think, of course, like right now, it's a little bit early to kind of decide that. But of course, it's always good to have a bit of motivation. And second of all is to support them in whatever they do. So, so, so let them pursue their passion, but make sure they work hard on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, so that's if you that's... want to do one thing, work hard on it. Right. right. Yeah. I Coming agree. from 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 a parent perspective. Um, there's a lot of psychologists out there mm -hmm. that worry about this this tiger mom kind of uh, oh. uh, growing up and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people who who are trying to say, hey, let kids be kids? Like like for example, mm -hmm. your kids. Your kids are doing kids things. Yes. Uh, yes. They're not. They're not concerned with developing a right. skill, a right. career. Right. Uh, what am I? Yeah. They're just being kids. Right. Mm -hmm. They're just being kids. Is that right? Is that wrong? Is this just different? I don't think there's any right or wrong concept to this because kids, there's kids. And every single person is different. So, like, I matured at a really young age. And I think my path was probably just, you know, starting from here. You know, some people might mature, like, really later on. So, for my, my mom, like, for me and my brother, she has, like, different expectations. Like, literally opposite expectations. For me, like, she wanted me to publish my first book when I was 10 years old. <laughs> As for my brother, like, at, at, He's never gonna write at literally 12 <laughs> years old, he is still very naive yeah. and still like, acts like a child. Like most kids. And she is totally fine with it because she thinks that he, and then she, and then she knows that he's really good at, you know, science things and mathematic things. So she pushes him to do, you know, Lego, kind of like, you know, Lego lessons. And she, she's like kind of paid attention to the fact that he's really good at it. And he's also like, he kind of challenges himself and he's very motivated to do that thing, which means that he's re he really loves it. So I think she's seen that, so she doesn't really expect her to be like me, who's like, you know, writing books and like, you know, so there I, are different expectations. I guess, it's, uh, I guess it's difficult for you to answer, like, I, I would like to know, what do you do if your child is just sitting and playing games all the time? Yeah. What can I tell you doing that to make you get up okay. and do, but you're not like that, so. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, I, it's hard for you to answer that, right? I think if your kid is always, I think, playing games, I think that's okay, but I think you have to instill the mindset that it's okay to play games, but you have to do something that, something that is important, that you like, that is, you know, that's something that is, you know, important for you and that you like first. My daughter, she, like many other kids, I believe, she say what she want to do. She want to be a YouTuber, she said, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, she said it. And I, I thought, it's great, okay, at least all you want to, all you want to know as a parent is what your kids want to do and then you want them to go for it, right? Mm -hmm. So she said it, but she's not going for it, right? I want to be a YouTuber and she's playing games. Um, I would like her to, 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 to try, right? To try. Mm -hmm. How, what can I say to make her actually follow up on what she want to be? I think, first of all, it's motivation. So I think you have to push her a little bit, like yeah. just a little bit, but don't make them feel like, oh, like uh, now I have this is like a, a homework or something, you yeah. know? So I think it's really important to kind of kind of remind them from time to time, like, oh, didn't you say that you wanted to be a YouTuber? Like, right. like, 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 what are you doing? Like, is this, you know, like, do you want to actually do it? Or is there something that you just said, like, you know? Like, so be, I think be sensitive on how yeah, I, I so be very it, sensitive. Which I wasn't. <laughs> what I would say yeah. is like, look, you make a you make a video, you make a YouTube video, you can play this week. One video a week. You make a video, you get to play uh, video games. You don't make a video. But I don't know. Maybe don't she, maybe that's too strong from what she's saying. Yeah. Well, it's, so. it's, it's 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 um, positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. You want to play your game? Make a video. Right. It's it's like the the. The threshold of entry is this. I'm helping you to become a YouTuber. Make a video, you can play games. I think that's a really good idea. 
because for me personally, I didn't have to have that kind of talk from my parent right, right. because I was just like, oh, I had an idea. I want to do it. You know, like I think, I think eventually, if your kid like really found something, maybe he doesn't really want to be a YouTuber. Maybe like he doesn't want hundred percent want to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like for me, I wanted to be a writer. So I wrote twenty four seven. Like I was just doing it by myself. I didn't have to tell have my parents to tell me, oh, right now, like no, it's six thirty. You have to write and then stuff like that. Like right, it wasn't right. really like a homework kind of type situation it was more like a self-motivated kind of thing and i also think that what you're doing when you do that if you do what i'm telling you is you call their bluff yes. you don't really want to be a youtuber but you don't really so want to call the bluff right you need to be more sensitive i mean yeah you want to but not like sure oh, but, but you just like, say yeah. that you got upset with her that's the wrong thing i guess that's what mm -hmm. you're saying i can't play computer games or like i think the problem is actually today is that most don't just they don't really know what they want yes, to be. Exactly. That is the problem in this world, not just with kids, many adults <laughs> yeah. too, mm -hmm. you know? And I think for that, you're, you're quite lucky, so, right? Yeah, From a young I, age, yeah. knowing. I think exposure to many diverse industries and like a lot of different things from like, you know, writing, designing, right, you know, doing like multiple things. I think that's really got me into like what I really like to do. And I like a lot of things now. So I think it's really important to kind of expose your kid to doing multiple things and then letting them figure out what they really like you know do you do you do any other regular kid stuff i don't know for play, example? play sports with your friends go out for ice cream i don't yeah, know what kids course. do these days <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, of course relationships boyfriends <laughs> yeah stuff like that of course like of course so, that so you, yeah. you, you so have time for all that with yeah, all your other stuff i'm not like super like you know how do you have time for everything i mean you know you are a high schooler you know, you're a high schooler, mm. you write a book, um, uh, you do photography, videos, you write for the magazine, you do the other kids stuff, and mm -hmm. exams, I mean, how? I think it's a time management problem, because I think that's the biggest thing that you have to learn if you want to be kind of like half of half, you want to do have your school life, your friends, and then also work. So I think it's just time management, and it's also just like, if you really want to make it work, you will make it work because you really want to do it so you will allocate the time for each specific thing. So like if I have to work from Monday to Friday, then I work from Monday to Friday and then I have set allocate times that I have to do work and I will do nothing else. But then like if I want to go out at night, like maybe on a Friday night, I want to go out with my friends, then yeah, I will not think about work and I'll just go out with my friends. And there's certain things and then, you know, you just have to allocate the time and do, do time you, blocking. Do you, do you watch, do you spend time on TikTok? Um, I personally don't watch TikTok because it's not, you don't have to do a whole like okay. SIM card thing. Do you, do yeah, you, no. do you, use, you use Facebook? I use Instagram a right. lot. So. We spoke about it before, right? A yeah. few weeks ago. Yeah. And I, I suddenly realized, I mean, I knew it before, but like it hit me like, yeah. Then they don't like Facebook. Facebook is like old people now. Yes. Yeah. Which is <laughs> look what we get to. I mean, it's crazy. Mm. But uh, so, so actually like a bunch of 20, 30 year olds, 30 something year olds, they spend a lot of time on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're wasting their time on Facebook, right? I uh, you don't, I know, but, but people do that, right? <laughs> You're also a productive person. You do a lot of videos, you know, and everything. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of people do that. I'm not talking about people here, business owners. I'm talking about general population, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess in Instagram is less time to spend. I guess you can also be like ours yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram is basically the same idea as any other social media platform, but it's just for younger people, I think, you know, because it's more kind of photo video based so it's easier to kind of go through it's a lot of she nice looking she was explaining stuff. me the other day like yeah. uh, how even though I use a lot of social media I know social media well yeah. but uh, like more like young people like how we're talking about what's how a story is different than a post right yeah and those kind of things mm -hmm. yeah which you don't know anything about <laughs> <laughs> um, Instagram mm -hmm. so how much do you spend on uh, social media I don't think there's like a certain time block but it's just I use it for kind of like looking at other people's content, getting inspired, and also just making my own content, being creative. That's just literally the two things that I do on there. Um, I wanted to I wanted to talk because, as you can see, I'm quite into gear. Mm -hmm. um, you're into photography. What kind of gear do you shoot with? Is it just your phone or have you upgraded? And how did you learn to use it? Are you, yeah. do you consider yourself professional on using a camera? So I have a Canon EOS 80D at this moment because I got it like two weeks ago and I just upgraded my gear from that 
I think from that point. And I used to use like a Lumix. I used to use different cameras, and I've always kind of like experimented. And a lot of like, the, I think for now, like the trend is film photography. I don't know if you're, you don't really know it, but it's basically having disposable cameras and shooting that kind of authentic, kind of like '90s, kind of like a little bit like a like a like a retro vibe. I think so. That that's very popular right now. So a lot of people want to do kind of like film photography shoots. And people have, I also have like an Olympus camera that is basically for film photography. So you have to roll the film, all that stuff. And I think, yeah, so I, I think my film, have, my kind of style has really like upgraded a lot. And the gear that I use, I think a lot of people on like professional photographers, they're like, they always like recommend to use different kind of gear, right? But at the end of the day, it's just important that you take good photography. It's not really about, you know, buying the most expensive gear, you know? It's about kind of like, just capturing the good content and making sure that it's you know fits your audience's kind of you know. He doesn't like hearing that. No, but I mean <laughs> no, you no, get no. you get both sides, you know. But yeah, 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 you know. yeah, yeah. You also use what you have. have. You use what you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> right. You can use your phone and then be and get the 10 million views. Sure, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah that's right. the thing. So yeah. How do you handle, for example, when you're gonna do video uh, products, uh, yeah. product video and product marketing? I think. How do you sit at the table and say like hey I'll do this video for you and uh, I'll charge this much and they'll look at you and you're like but can you deliver can you I mean there's always that doubt from the person mm -hmm. who's talking to you for the first time yeah you talk about confidence but more step by step how do you handle that kind of like looking down at a, oh you're just 16 year old I think first of all um, people are very shocked when I tell them I am only 15 or 16 years old you know, so because I, first of all, do you ever lie? I give them, I don't really have a line, but usually, do like, you, no, do for, you ever for example, lie? Do oh, you lie? lie? Uh, not really, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, for like Billy, like, for example, when I was trying to get my job at Here Magazine, I, first of all, I sent in like a resume and on like, like, I emailed him, I think I emailed like here, and then I gave them my resume. And then he got it and he emailed me back, and then we had a little bit of conversation. And he was like, okay, I'll meet you like this time date for an interview. And I was like, sure. And then I came and then I printed out a resume of like all my experiences, everything that I've gotten. And then I gave it to him and he was really impressed. And then he was really impressed by like how confident I was. And in the end, like probably like the last like few minutes, I told him I was only 15 or kind of slipped it in, you know, like, and then he was very, by very shocked. <laughs> he was very shocked and then he got, and then he was very interested in what I could do. For example, I could do videos and I could also do kind of, I knew a little bit more about sales marketing, social media marketing. I also knew about photography. I could write for Rachel. Like I could do like a bunch of things. So I had like the skill set. I didn't necessarily have like a lot of experience, but I had the skill set and I was being very professional about it so and then he called Rachel and then we had a great conversation with Rachel and everything went smoothly after that so, so this is basically really how you handle issue. this is basically answering your question I guess how you handle the kind of first moment where people know you're yeah. under 16 so it's just, or 15 yeah, yeah you kind so of like you wait until until you've done all your presentation <laughs> and like and by the way I'm yeah, 16 yeah. <laughs> right yeah so I think having that professional because not a lot of people because the, the thing that he told me that really shocked me when I gave him my resume like Give him, give him like, a, like a print copy of my resume. He's like, a lot of people, young people these days don't really do this. Like right. when they kind of ask me for a job or an internship, they're usually just like, uh, can I get a job or something like that. Something there like is really no cover letter. I think oh, yeah, I, got, I got your email first. Yeah, yeah, I think I got, you got my email yes, first. Yes, yeah, and I was impressed, very impressed. Because yeah, I mean, actually, <laughs> I, I think I was impressed mostly because you, uh, we're in China, right? Mm -hmm. So. I mean, I'm 17 years here. I don't know how I'm prefer I guess it depends where you live, where you are. Mm -hmm. New York, probably people are professional, right? Yeah. Um, some place in o Ohio or Idaho, maybe less. But in here, a lot of time, like Billy said, you get an email, job application, there is a resume attached. There's nothing in email. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. There's not even a cover letter. Yeah. I mean, really? But hi. And I got <laughs> used to it. I yeah. I'm not even saying I'm not going to interview them. I still interview them. I shouldn't probably, but her email was cover letter, resume, other stuff, you know, like proper, right? Yeah. So, uh, old school. That was extremely more, important. <laughs> that was a little bit of a training in school, so mm. I did. They teach you in international schools. They don't right? really teach you. Like, I did like this course, I did like a yearbook course, and we had like a three person making our entire, like, literally, this was how thick the yearbook was. 
and it was des it was down from like the design, templating, emailing people, photographing everything. We had to do the whole thing by ourselves. And I emailed probably 100, 200 people for that one year, and just to get information. And I had to be very respectful, very you know. So I think that was something that was taught to me that I really value. And that was something that I learned a little bit more about myself, and I kind of implemented when I was going out for job interviews. So, that. so now since you are young, but you're making money in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, you, I spoke to you about it in the, in the preparation, right? Like I said, I said honestly, like usually it would be great you are someone that is able to do things, and um, but we wouldn't pay you usually, yeah. right? We wouldn't usually. pay someone like you. Say, so, okay, internship, you know, okay, you can write. Let's let her write, see how she does, and it's an internship of whatever six months, right? Um, but with you, it started differently, which we respect a lot, right? Um, you think you're ever gonna do internship? With anyone, like, would you work for someone for free to learn something? I think I would. Yeah, because definitely I would. So it, mm -hmm. it doesn't make you like feel like, oh, I'm making money. I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. I think, I think it depends. I think it depends on what industry you want to go into, right. and also what company that you want to apply to, right. and what you know. If you just go for like a job versus internship, what you're gonna get, you know. So right. I really kind of put that into view and just see like. Depending on like, it depends on like your time and where you're at. If you're in college, if you want to earn a little bit of money, or what your purpose is, basically. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I wanted to continue asking a little bit about this product photography. Mm -hmm. um, when you meet with a customer, yeah. do you introduce your vision or do you listen to them exactly? What is it? What they want? Do you do you would, do you mm. do what they want? or do you sell what you want to do with the product, for example? I think for people here, I think it depends on places, but here in Dongguan, most people want you to take a specific kind of video. And you they know, know I, what they want. They know what they want. So I think as someone that's like a freelance videographer, you're, you're like, you know, delivering that, but then also adding a little bit of your twist to it, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of interesting where you're kind of adding your own kind of unique taste to and that's what they kind of want. They want you because you can add that a little bit of like different value, something that's interesting, something that's never seen before. Mm -hmm. And they want that, but then they also want you to kind of follow the guidelines that they're kind of set. Yeah. Do so you, do you write shooting plans? Do you prepare like as professionally as you can? I think I prefer I, as professionally as I can because as one person that does from the planning, to the shooting, to the editing, to the delivering, like I've done like the whole process. So I think First of all, it gives you a bit of independence, so you can kind of decide what you want to do. But then I also try to kind of deliver like proposals, kind of like kind of break down, have a good conversation with the CEO, whoever's hiring me. Kind of like getting us on the same page first is really important, and then shooting, and then you know, kind of getting that development. What so is the the highest value product that you've shot? Like, have you shot a car? Have you shot jewelry? Have you? What kind of things have you shot? I think I've shot for, I think, a cafe. They have a lot of, they're basically like Starbucks. Like, they're really, like, they have a lot of shops around China and in also in Taiwan. And it's called, uh, I think it's like Bluebird Cafe. They have, like, one right Bluebird, next door. Yeah. They have a lot of chain stores, like Bluebird. Um, they have Cafe one. Cafe Life, My Cafe Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, I shot for them. They have them. different brands. So I think that's, like, the it's biggest big one that I've worked in at the moment that I can think of recently. But, yeah, they wanted me to shoot, like, a new, like, their, their new, like, bread, I think. So I shot that. And I think they put it up in, like, with some marketing videos on WeChat and also on you know, different like cafe stores, I think. So they're putting it in? Yeah, yeah, they put it in like wherever they have a TV, I guess, is, yeah. Is this something you, what do you enjoy more? Just photography, videography, editing, uh, writing, which one do you enjoy the most? I think uh, there's not one that I enjoy the most. I think because I can't do like, this is why I kind of tap into different things. So I don't have to get, you know, be stuck in one industry, you know? So this is an entrepreneur idea you yeah. know to be to know many things to know many things but not specialize in one because yeah. then you know you build a company probably yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so you also want to have you want to have a skill set but then as a leader as someone like right. if you're a ceo of your own company right. you have to tell other people what to do but you have to have also know what they're doing because you know maybe you've done it before if you're telling your photographer to do this you can do it yourself honestly but you just want to have someone to do it and you also want to know what they're doing. So you kind of, but then you're also overlooking the project and developing like the it, ideas. Okay. Yeah, it so. is important to be able to evaluate what the person is doing. But I kind yeah. of feel like writing 
Yeah, writing. Am I right? Writing is seems like something that you have more passion for, so especially since yeah. you started at eight. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think. I think. You wrote a book. Yeah, I think it's been. I think it's different over time because I was. I used to be more passionate about it before, but <laughs> then I've also kind of diversified and tried a lot of different things since then. So. I've had a lot of different passions, I think. But writing, I think, I think you, as you say, is my main, main one right. for now. Yeah. I, I work a lot with teenagers, and mm -hmm. uh, well, Chinese teenagers are are mm -hmm. quite peculiar in a way that they they have developed their their maturity. One of the things that I like to ask them, and one of the things that they often tell me is, "Oh, I want to be a boss. I want to be a boss. I want to be a boss." You ask any teenager, "I want I mean, of what?" I don't know. I want to be you, a you boss. You said it so carefully, by the way. <laughs> You said it so nicely. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, sort of yeah. It. But I have a question for you. What is your definition of success? My definition of success? I think... What, what is success to you? Do you consider yourself successful? As of now, not successful. Maybe I can be... But not a failure. Just not... But not a failure. Yeah, definitely. But I don't think... Work in progress. But yeah, work in progress, it's honestly. Interesting. It's yeah. interesting how she... Yeah. Yeah, because I think... There's Actually, like something that I've like, there's like this thing where people have asked me like, who do you look up to, you know? And then I always say, there's not one, there, I look up to me in 10 years from now. So I'm always kind of pursuing, you know, to do better, but there's not always like, you know, one person that I kind of look up to. If I look up to, I don't know, like a superstar or something like that, like a celebrity, but not like something but, like but that. But you didn't answer the first part of the question, which success. is the most important What is success part. to you? Exactly. Success, what is success to me part? is basically, being satisfied with what I'm doing. I think just to be like, you know, kind of reaching that point where I'm like, okay, this is something good. I am proud of this. And, you know, like, like I'm like making kind of like a difference in the world and I'm doing it a little bit to help people. You know, so it's just, it's just something, you know. There's that balance between creating things yeah. and making money. Yeah. Would you do it for free if it satisfies you, you? Would you do, I mean, for example, I'm a teacher. Yeah. And I always think to myself, if there's anything that I would like to do is I would like to teach in some of the poorest areas of China where, where I, if I didn't have to worry about money, that's what I would like to do because that's what I know mm -hmm. I can change people's yeah. lives and future. That's what I would love to do. Yeah, of course. But then there's a the practical side like, yeah, hey, I think but Starbucks, right? Eh, mm. Mm, eh. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's finding that balance. So... Um, there you go. I mean, I think that, that realistically speaking... Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, uh, if you ask me, you're very successful. At this point, for who you are and what you're doing, you're very successful. What is success to you? Is it, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, a very, it's a very complicated question, but success to me is being content. Yeah, exactly. Being happy with your life, being what satisfied. you're doing, satisfied. Ask me, ask me. Yeah, what, what is it? <laughs> what is it for you? For me, success, and, and we've talked about this in other, in other podcasts, is I set goals for myself. Mm. And then I just put time, energy, money into achieving them. Remember when, when you guys wrote about me and my YouTube channel? I said, like, don't look at my, my YouTube channel now. Look at my YouTube channel in five years. Mm -hmm. So in five years, right. I'm, not, I'm not there. I'm calling it quits. But the same with Iron Man, the same with my company, the same with scuba diving, the same with... I give myself targets and I just go for them. Mm -hmm. And then I can look back and say, like, I've accomplished a lot. But if you didn't accomplish it... Would you be learning? Learning, right? Yeah. So it doesn't mean you're not successful. I mean, you, their life is full of many different things. For sure. some people, successful means just their family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it's uh, you know other things. One thing for sure, it's definitely not just money. For sure. No. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> we can all agree on that. All right. So let's. I want to ask you uh, about um, the difference. Like you asked about, you, you mentioned teenagers, Chinese teenagers, you mentioned, and how they just. Uh, they want to be a boss, which is ridiculous for me. Come on, I mean, you said it so nicely, but it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> it's a ridiculous uh, things to aspire to. I mean, yeah, it's a result. It's not something to, you know, mm -hmm. um, but it's not their fault. It's the way things go here, education in China. So that's what I wanted to ask you about, right? Mm -hmm. um, you were fortunate enough to study in international school, right? And um, that gives you a mindset. Yes, yeah, it gives you course. mindset, a, a space to think, creativity, and many, mm -hmm. many different things, right? Not to say that international schools in China are the best things in the world, but, you know, comparing with Chinese schools, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you know how the system works, 
there. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, my kids go to Chinese school, but my kids, I want them to speak Chinese fluently. You have Chinese at home, right? Yeah. It's different. They don't have. But so, do you think if you studied at Chinese schools, would, would you, you be, be the a same different place? person? Yeah. yeah. Definitely not. No. A hundred percent no. Yeah. You have friends from why? Chinese schools. I think I have. Yeah, I have friends that okay. came from Chinese schools. Do it from Chinese schools, and I have friends from like Chinese schools, and they obviously have a very different mindset compared to. They wouldn't have been able to write this book if they were in China. If I was what, in, what, what, what would the limitations be for them? I think it's just different characteristic traits that come out of that kind of atmosphere and that kind of environment. For example, like it's not it's just not very. I'm just like giving examples, but. Like, if you are in an international school, I think most people there are more open and diverse, and they have they're very independent, and they have you know they they are very open to different things. But I think if you live if you are in a Chinese school a very Chinese school student, then you're maybe a little bit more limited to what you're exposed to, and a little bit more limited to the kind of learning style, such as you know being like freedom and like time management. And being able to, you know, it's so much not their fault. Yeah, it's not yeah, their yeah, fault, no, no, no. but so I think it's just like it's just the system that yes. you kind of put them in. The way the way that I see Chinese school education, and I think where they where they really suffer is they limit creativity too much. There's no room for creativity. It's just yeah, just true. repeat, repeat, memorize, memorize, memorize. It's not memorize. like they don't want you yes. to be. There is no room for that. There's exactly, because no mm-hmm. how you're going to evaluate the value and, and, and the, the creativity of 50 kids if you're a teacher? No, I just need need performance. So this is right or wrong. It's just A or B, and, and mm-hmm. the, the, that's it. You got 99%, you got 95 But they're like, let's see what is the creative value behind this. And, yes. and then there is no space for creativity when even when you are done because they're done with school at six and then they have homework a lot right and then they're done at eight or nine some schools even worse or whatever right Mm -hmm. and then imagine it's like when you had a hard day at work and you come back home and you just want to relax and whine you cannot there is no space for creativity these kids have no space yeah Mm -hmm. so i mean and in the end i guess i mean some of the parents like maybe also the reason why they want to be lauban or want to be a boss right uh, it's so not they can do what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe like what she said, uh, you, you two say that, you know, you never got the free money, you know, like from your mm-hmm. parents, right? Which is very, very important. And maybe these kids get without. So, so how do you, what do you think about this system? I mean, obviously you don't have favorable things to say about the system, yeah. but like, do you think it's going to change? Do, what do you think from your perspective? I don't think that China, China I think... There, of course, like in China, I don't know if it's going to change, but because it's been like a system that's been for ages, like it's been literally, this is what China is, has so, like that specific system that they use. And so I don't know if that's going to change, but I think that there are certain things that Chinese schools can implement from international schools, such as, you know, projects, maybe give them a little bit more time to, you know, kind of allocate their own time maybe uh, give them a little bit of or like a f- like a free schedule kind of like helping them to kind of allocate and giving them more like expansive of like choices and courses such as you know photography classes or you did, I don't know, they should like, do you mean yeah just like something but that kind of you wish not, there was more yeah I wish there was more so it's not very because you know Chinese school students are really academic based they don't really kind of have yes. the opportunity to branch out to maybe clubs right. or you know different courses stuff right. like that or extracurricular stuff like that so I think if you give them that opportunity to kind of branch out and think outside the box it will really help them how do you see that those kids you said you have friends that move from Chinese schools Mm -hmm. to the international school yeah Um, how do they adjust how do they first of all they're probably very happy (laughs) no homework no galco but how do they do they is it hard for them or is it like I think the first part is just that Chinese to English, they have to speak more English. I think right, that's the sure, first part, yeah. Sure. But then the second part is that I think they get used to the system over time. And I think Chinese school students, what is very good, like a really a benefit from you know Chinese school students is that they're, a lot of them are very, they focus on academics. They're really good at academics. And they like work really hard in it because their parents, you know, maybe the parents just like tell them to work hard in that and right. get good grades. Right. I think that part they're really good at. They're really good at studying. But, but the, they are a little bit a little bit more limited to branching out of their own comfort zones. For example, their own like high school social circles. 
and kind of branching out to you know knowing different people and meeting different people so i figured that a lot of people that, yeah yeah so a lot of like chinese school students when they come to the school they immediately like kind of gravitate towards other chinese students hmm. so it becomes like a little chinese you know community, community. so that's right. one of the things in international school you have a little bit of like a group kind of thing so yeah i think that's kind of what happens but people like chinese students that really kind of you know, put themselves a little bit out there, it definitely makes a difference. All right, and we are back with Shirley Wang. Shirley, we are about to start playing our game called This or That, all right? Um, the okay. idea is very simple. We're gonna give you a couple of options, and will you tell us what your choice is, and then you explain to us whatever rationale there is behind your choice. Very cool. simple, right? right? So, yeah. you're first. I? Me? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, wait. All right. You wrote a book on your computer. Did you use a Mac or a PC? I used a Mac. Why? Because I've always had a Mac and I've barely used a PC. I think it's more like, you know, young people use a lot of Macs, I think, more often. <laughs> Thank you. I feel flattered because I use Mac. I, okay. I might buy one soon, <laughs> finally. Okay. Um, all right. My question is Kindle or real books? What do you prefer? Real books. You prefer real books? Yeah, because you can feel the texture and it feels more, you know, feels, yeah. Feels good. Feels good. Yeah. You like real books. Do yeah. you judge people who use Kindles? Oh, I have a Kindle, so <laughs> I can I can do both. I think Kindle, you can have access to books really quickly, and I think uh -huh. that's a good part of being having a Kindle. But I think it used to hurt my eyesight, so I just stopped using it a little bit, and I've just started, went back to kind of real books. All right. Um, because you talk about business and, and developing mm. businesses, brick and mortar business or a virtual service business which do you think is the future i think virtual businesses is definitely the future because i think more people are transferring to virtual businesses especially like since the coronavirus a lot of businesses have transferred online and have their own shops online their websites stuff, their websites stuff like that and i think that's literally the way in the path of the future is virtual stuff and all digital right. stuff all right so mine is English or Chinese language? English. Prefer English? Yes. You speak Chinese at home? Yes. Yeah. With your parents, you speak Chinese? Mm -hmm. With your brother? A blend, mostly. You blend, but a you blend. prefer English? I prefer English. Why? I'm more fluent in English, yeah, I guess. Just, okay, you think yeah. that. And I do you write in Chinese too? Uh, no, not really. I do, I can write in Chinese, like texting, but writing books, I don't, not really my, okay. yeah. All right. What would you rather accumulate? money or experiences experiences definitely because i think that experiences you can have for a lifetime money goes away and money you can also always accumulate over time i think mm -hmm. yeah all right fiction or non-fiction oh it depends on fiction fiction for the most part because i don't like non-fiction i like self-help business but for fiction i like most of the genres there in there you know like romance and you know most like mystery that I think there are more varieties that you can touch into it's more interesting for you know someone that you know so as young as me I think so for nonfiction you do read the self-help business books on yeah you. but you fiction is stuff. yeah, yeah. What's, your, what's your favorite book by the way this is not part of the 10 questions favorite book my favorite book is the the Iliad and the Odyssey oh wow which one the, the Iliad, Iliad, and, the Iliad and the Odyssey yeah so I think my favorite book has been uh, I think it's called Girl Boss. I think it was by Sophia Amor Sophia Amoruso. Uh -huh. She um, she is the um, CEO of a really famous retailer in the U.S. And she kind of just tells her story, and it's very fun, interesting. Kind of inspired this book actually. And it was very so it's a self. It's a it's a nonfiction. Yeah, it's a little bit of an autobiography. I think. Yeah. Oh, right. It's about her business. Yeah. On to my next question: Who should earn more, husband or wife? Hmm very difficult I don't think that's very uh, since I'm female I'm gonna say wife but <laughs> I think like there's always that family dynamic where the husband has to earn money and the wife has to stay home but I think that you know since we're going to like our generation is basically breaking that mold into where the wife can also make money and the dad can be stay-at-home dads you know so mm -hmm. I think both ways is fine but as a female, I'm just going to go for, you know, wife, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, mine is YouTube or Instagram? Hmm. YouTube for YouTube, I think, because Thanks YouTube has taught it. me a lot of things. 
but Instagram is you more like of like, Instagram. Instagram, of course I love Instagram. It's very aesthetically pleasing and it's, you can also learn a lot of things, connect with a lot of people and then different, different purposes, I think for both, but YouTube, because I learned a lot of things from YouTube. Okay. All right. Um, my last question is mm -hmm. the goal justifies the means. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? The goal just, the goal, this is a bit, the goal justifies the, the means. means. So like when as you long, do, you as, do long as, you, as long as you get the goal, it doesn't matter how you get there. Yes or no? Like I you would you do anything? I don't think. I think you have to put your morals in mind. But I think for the most part, yes. But then for like, if you do something that doesn't really you know follow your morals along the way to get to your goal, then obviously it's not good. But then of course you know achieving your goal is great. But then. Yeah, you have to consider what you're doing uh, during so, the process. So it doesn't justify the means. Yeah, so no, I think. I think that when the goals are based on good values, yeah. um, pretty much all your means or your decisions are going to be in line with those, yeah, with yeah, those yeah. values. And your last one? And my last one <laughs> is uh, Taiwan or mainland China? Taiwan, because I'm Taiwanese. So I have so to say Taiwan, yeah. If you, that's your home? Yeah, that's my home. So Okay. Cool. Well, and that was this or that. But we are not done, Shirley. We're going to ask you a few more questions. So, Sif, you wanted to know a little bit more about... Yes, I, want, I wanted to know, uh, living here, what mm -hmm. what age did you move to to the mainland from Taiwan? Like, when I was not even one. Not even one? Yeah. Okay. I lived here my whole life. Okay. And uh, how did China help shape you made you who you are today in some way i'm sure i mean you're here all your life how anything that's here you experience here that maybe you wouldn't have back home i think the people i think it's very different like the people that you deal with here because there's a chinese people definitely really different from taiwanese people and taiwanese people i think it's just like t chinese people are more ambitious in a way compared to Taiwanese people. But Taiwanese people are more kind of, you know, they're very nice, they're very kind, but they don't really kind of step out of their comfort zones. And Chinese people are more kind of, you know, bold and ambitious and very- Go-getters. Yeah, go-getters, yeah. So definitely, you know, there's definitely a difference living here and you're definitely inspired by Dongguan, which is a, the manufacturing hub of China. So you meet a lot of business people and you kind of, social, socializing is very important here. And, you know, building a really strong social circle and, you know, having like my family, which is, you know, having those like resources and being here, I think is, it's a really great opportunity. So, so you, you, are you Chinese? Or, I mean, you're Taiwanese, I understand, right? yeah, yeah, which yeah. is true. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in heritage, are you Ch you're Chinese? Right? Yeah, Asian, yeah. So like all this argument that is about that, I mean, in some, it's I think. It's political. I think it's very, yeah. I, think, so, I think it's really political. Right, yeah. but in heritage, it's obvious, right? Your heritage is Chinese, but you're yeah. a Taiwanese person. Yeah, of right, course. Mm -hmm. Right, right, okay. Just, um, yeah. You mentioned that that um, when we when we asked you whether mainland or, uh, or Taiwan, you said Taiwan, but you have lived here most of your life. What element of Taiwan made you say Taiwan, apart from the fact that you were born there? Do you go there often? What are your cultural I connections or? I think that, I think that both are really great. But I think personally for me as someone that's Taiwanese, I would stand with some people that are like Taiwanese. And then I like, I personally like, I get along with Taiwanese people better than I do with, not that I don't get along with Chinese people, but I have like a cultural connection with mm -hmm. people that are Taiwanese. And I think that's something that's really, you know, rare that you can only get like people that, you know, from your own country, you can definitely connect with a little bit more better, yeah. you know? So I think personally, like that's what I, I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, it's of course Taiwan for her. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, if someone asked yeah, me, I wasn't expecting if someone, yeah, if someone, yeah, if yeah. someone yeah. asked me, uh, China or Israel, I mean, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's yeah. my home, right? <laughs> Even though some people may, may, may prefer China, some people, yeah, of course. Like, you yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I understand. All right. So um, we wanted to talk about the future. Yeah, when we were talking about, about um, what is success, you mentioned that you wanted to measure success based on who Shirley Wang is going to be in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's in the cards for you? So what's next? How do you see yourself in 5, 10, 15 years? And this is like a job interview kind of question. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so yeah. Are you hiring? As someone that's pretty young, I think one of my benefits is that I get time to learn. So mm -hmm. I can 
branch into different industries. I can learn different things. I can build more skills. And of course, that's what I'm doing now. And of course, I am obviously like in 10 years, I want to be something. I want to do something that's bigger. And for now, like a big idea for starting with this book, it is a great resource for teenage entrepreneurs. And I think that is an industry that's not tapped into as well yet. So my purpose would be in 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it would be to help teenage entrepreneurs kind of find their path, find their road, and then kind of jumpstart that and help them do that. So my idea would be like having a kind of teenage entrepreneur based agency. Because you know you have those modeling agencies. You have, I don't know, like influencer, social media. Like they hire like those people, and then they give you an agent, stuff like that. Like you have those agencies, but you don't have a lot of you know teenage entrepreneurs. Because that's why I think you don't really know a lot of teenage entrepreneurs is because that they're not you know they're not really mainstreamed and they're not really you know nobody is nobody knows who they are. They don't know who to fund them, stuff like that. So I think I want to build a good base for people to get really good advice and also to help them out, give them the connection that they need to jumpstart their career. So you mean you want to continue even when you are not a teenager anymore, helping teenagers? That's yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously I would have a good, I would have a good team with like, you know, someone from this generation. I want to keep up to up to date with the trends and of course with younger people. And as someone that's you know, I can definitely start now. I can start like this business now with this agency, and that is a really good idea. That I'm like, partnering with like different people with the same idea and that have the same goals. So I think this is something that you know hasn't been done before, and I want to do that. So in your mind, in your mind, you're surely going to be uh, a boss or yeah, entrepreneur, yeah, entrepreneur, definitely. an entrepreneur. owner of a business. And yeah, that's where I want to go. Yeah, definitely, yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. All right, that's interesting. Cool. Yeah. Well, surely we want to thank you very much for your time, for yes. uh, sharing your experience and sharing your your expertise at such a young age. Yeah, if with you watch, us. if you watched all the way till now, I mean, you definitely need to go uh, on Amazon and search for this and get it for your Kindle. Yeah, Business yeah. Insider for uh, with a teenager. Business yeah. Insider for a teenager, and I think uh, I'm looking forward to hear big things about you in the future in a few oh, more years. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, guys. Well, you know how it goes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content of our channel, then make sure to subscribe to it. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to do what? To be notified whenever there's a new video out. There you go. <laughs> and well, you know how it goes. <laughs> make sure to follow us on all the social media that's here at the bottom. And well, until we see you again, this is Fernando from, of course, China. Bye-bye.